everyone, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today I am doing my monthly book haul and unboxing video and I'm so excited about the books I am showing off this month. We're kind of reaching that point of the year where the new releases are just rolling. There's so many things coming out, there's so many things I want to read and I'm actually have been consistently in the reading spirit since January so I'm actually getting through so many books. So with that in mind, every book I picked up this month I'm hoping to read soon. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first part of this video is actually going to be the unboxing and I am of course again working with book of the month for this video. I have been touting about my love of book of the month since what feels like forever. I'm gonna do it again because I love them so much. If you're not familiar, book of the month is an online book subscription service. Every single month they curate a selection of new releases across a variety of different genres. For $14.99 you can essentially pick one of those books and get it sent directly to your door. It's always a hardcover, it's always a new release, it's such a good deal. They have amazing blurbs as to why each book was selected. You can also add up to two additional books both from these five selections that month, but also from their huge back catalog. Again, spans a large amount of different genres from YA to adult to fantasy to nonfiction, anything you could possibly think of. You can skip months with absolutely no penalty to yourself, and it's just all around my favorite book service out there. I love all of their thoughtful selections. I've read so many interesting books from them, things that I never would have really discovered on my own. So it's just such a fun way to feel like you're kind of in this big book club with a bunch of other people and I love it. Per usual, I do have a coupon code. If you use this code here, you can get your first month for only $9.99, which is such a good deal. And per usual, I have all of the March books here to show off, so I'm excited to dive right in. There's one book I'm especially thrilled about, so I can't wait to see everything. All right, so the first book I'm gonna show off and the one that was just at the top of the box is the book that I'm so thrilled to have in my possession, and that is The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson. As you guys might remember, I have recently read Eric Larson's other famous work of nonfiction, which is The Devil in the White City, which I loved. I listened to it on audiobook and I just flew through it. I consumed it. I could not put it down. So I was thrilled to see that his new release was included as a selection this month for Book of the Month. And this is a really detailed saga essentially following Churchill during World War II. World War II as a topic I feel pretty familiar with, but hyper-focusing on one super powerful individual, obviously within the political scope of World War II deeply intrigues me and I just feel like Eric Larson has such a way of creating a narrative amongst his nonfiction. so you're learning a bunch and it's definitely all true but in a way you feel like you're reading a novel um, so I feel like he's just such a great job transporting you within the story and I'm just so excited to learn about Churchill people around him and all of that uh, obviously set in such a huge historical moment that was World War II so so excited to pick this up. I've heard exceptional things about this so far, and this is definitely like really gonna be at the top of my TBR. Such a big fan of this author. Thrilled. The next book I have to show off uh, is another novel that I am really excited to pick up, and that is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. This is a story that is following a woman who's in her late 20s, early 30s, who's kind of on the precipice of her life. She kind of has to confront a variety of things, and this is something I really relate to as I grow older and I kind of feel closer and closer to impending like final adulthood. This follows her main character Casey who's recently been blindsided by her mother's death. She kind of escapes her past life and moves to Cambridge, Massachusetts. There she's waiting tables and kind of ignoring both the wedding invitations she's receiving in the mail as well as all the notices from debt collectors. In her new small moldy apartment she's looking to actually write a book and at the same time she's kind of pursuing love affairs with two different men. This is essentially a story about Casey trying to like balance her ambitions. I really like this line in the synopsis that says, Casey's fight to fulfill her ambitions and balance the conflicting demands of art and life is challenged in ways that pushes her to a brink. This is a book that's supposed to be really challenging, really emotional, but really funny and full of wit. It just really intrigues me. I really like stories about women just kind of like fighting for whatever it is that brings them passion. Um, and I've been wanting to read a novel by Lily King because I've heard really great things, so super pumped to have this new release as well. Next book I have to show off is A Good Neighborhood, which really has caught my attention because it is a family drama set in a suburban backdrop in America, which is just a set of buzzwords for me. There's something about like intense neighborly relationships that just like intrigues me to no end and kind of the underlying drama of like two different families living their own lives and like forced to confront each other in really interesting ways. 
but this essentially follows two families that are now neighbors. One family is a single mother who has raised her son who's now recently gone off to college. She's kind of confronting being an empty nester for the first time. The beginning of the story and a new family moves in next door to her. The patriarch of this family is a really successful man, kind of a local celebrity, has made a lot of money and he's building this big beautiful home. The mom is a stay-at-home mother but they have kind of a tumultuous relationship with their daughter. These two family lives collide because these two teenagers begin to date. And I think there's like a lot of conflict starting with a tree kind of along their property line and I think it kind of escalates from there. Again, I love suburban drama, I love family drama, I love Little Fires Everywhere, I loved everything I never told you, so I'm hoping this has kind of similar vibes to that in the intensity, but obviously like a very different story, I'm sure. But yeah, this is something I'm so pumped for. The next book sounds romantic and also like sad, a book that's definitely gonna pull on the heartstrings, and that is The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. This is basically following our main character, Lydia, who has a great love. Her and her boyfriend, Freddie, have been together for over 10 years. They seem perfect together. They're a perfect pair, perfect match, and they're really excited about their future lives together. But unfortunately, Freddie dies. And Lydia has to kind of confront this new reality of life without Freddie. And with the help of her sister and her good friend, she's kind of beginning to take those tentative steps of encountering life again and possibly loving again. But then something unexpected happens. She kind of finds this doorway between past and present, which allows her to kind of live in her past life with Freddie without his passing. But this is taking a toll on her both emotionally and physically. And I think this is a story about a woman who kind of has to confront mourning, letting someone she loves so deeply go to be able to live her life again in the future. This again sounds like it's romantic and sweet but like so sad and emotional like I almost cried reading the synopsis. I'm also a Cancer but you know like so that just kind of happens to me but yeah this sounds really sweet, really intriguing and again like I'm just gonna stay up all night crying while reading it. <laughs> the next book is a book that's definitely outside of my reading comfort zone. It's definitely in a genre that I always watch when it comes to entertainment and movies. It's actually something I'm really excited to have on my shelf because it might just be something that you know opens me up to a whole new genre within the reading world I wasn't previously reading. But the book is Hour of the Assassin, and this basically follows our main character Nick, who is just like a top agent, a, a top CIA agent, and throughout his career he's kind of notoriously been known to kind of been able to infiltrate and navigate any type of geopolitical issue or assignment um, without failing. This He actually has a really interesting job in that he is kind of deployed to test the strength of security in that he's basically like a mock killer, a mock assassin to kind of check the reinforcements around people who might be targeted by other agents. At the beginning of the book his current assignment is to essentially check the security measures around the former director of the CIA but when he does so he kind of finds himself in the middle of a plot that he's framed for. He views himself obviously as like the perfect scapegoat in this. We kind of sees how he was used in this scenario but he's kind of working through this novel to uncover all the lies and the secrets to kind of clear his name. Again, I love spy dramas and assassin dramas. It's definitely a genre within movies and TV shows that I watch all the time. I've never actually read anything quite like this. I read it perhaps in the fantastical setting, so I'm excited to try a new like geopolitical thriller based novel. Um, yeah, I'm excited to have this on my shelf. I, I feel like this will be a really fast read. Guys, those are all of the March book of the month picks. Of course, I will have a link down below for you guys to sign up if you're interested, as well as the coupon code. But now I'm gonna jump into the final few books I picked up this month as well. The first one is Steel Crow Saga. This is a book I picked up while upstate with Clay at a local bookstore. It caught my eye. I've actually never heard of it before, but the byline on the top really sold me. It said, Pokemon combined with Avatar The Last Airbender. Clever, stylish, and gloriously fun. Really, it was kind of like a say no more scenario and I immediately picked it up. One of my favorite fantasy series was also inspired by Pokemon. Uh, the Jim Butcher series, the Codex Alera, has that kind of influence as well and I loved every second of that series so I'm really excited to see how it's kind of deployed within this fantasy setting. This is essentially a multi-perspective fantasy story about four different destinies colliding in a world at war and wonders where empire is one with enchanted steel and magical animal companions. Uh, that fight along their masters in battle. So yeah, it's like Pokemon, but like fantasy with like major kingdoms that conflict with each other. I'm thrilled. I can't wait to, to discover this for myself and see what I think. 
and I hope there's lots of really cute creatures that are just kicking butt left and right all day long because I'm here for that, let me tell you. Next book I have to show off is definitely an anticipated book and that is Crescent City by Sarah J Mass, House of Earth and Blood. This of course is the first book to her new series. I have been a long time fan of Sarah J Mass. I think her books are highly entertaining. I always fly through them. I know what I'm going into uh, on the offset and that this will likely be a really romance heavy fantasy series, but it does have magic and politics as well. I find them again so entertaining and I can't put them down. I recognize that her writing is not for everyone, but I personally have always enjoyed them, so I have been looking forward to picking this up. I don't actually know what this is about. Uh, it's, Sarah J Mass has kind of reached that point where I don't really even look at the synopsis. I just, I'm like, oh yeah, she's writing a new series. I'm going to check it out. But I'm sure it's going to be a multi-perspective fantasy story, bound by blood, tempted by desire, unleashed by destiny. Yeah, say no more. I'm interested. <laughs> it's actually a really long book. I'm probably going to pick this book up in April, but I'm pretty pumped for it. I really can never put down her books. I think they're just enthralling. So I of course picked up Crescent City and I'm excited to see what I think. The very last book I picked up this month is Middle Game by Sinan McGuire. This book has been on my radar for a while. I would definitely thank Lala for really pushing me to pick this book up. I've also just been reading a lot of God-centered fantasy I would say over the past six months and it's just a perspective that I find fascinating. These all-powerful beings that inherently are kind of flawed because they have fixed Natures, kind of this perspective of gods not being dynamic or like having to overcome change is really interesting to me. And I have been reading the Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin, which has really inspired me to pick up more God-centered fantasy stories. But this, I believe, is about like the origin of existence, perhaps. And I think this follows two brothers who are gods, but like not quite yet. And like their conflict and their relationship. I don't know too much about it, but I kind of want to keep it that way. I feel like this is going to be a very peculiar book about two entities creating creation, perhaps. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely interested. I love a weird dark fantasy book. And, uh, and this line here is definitely a seller. Godhood is attainable. Pray it isn't attained. Oh yeah, <laughs> tell me more. Definitely gonna be reading this soon. Alrighty guys, that is my March book haul. Let me know down below some books you have picked up recently as I would love to know. And I'll see you guys soon with another video soon.